this is going to be part two of this uh, Viz WR50C signal generator. It's not just an RF generator. Instead of showing a whole bunch of uh, stuff on the oscilloscope and the spectrum analyzer, I'm going to just let the knob in the middle here somewhere. What I'll do is tune it to the nearest even frequency, like 20, 8, 900 kilohertz. Going to test every band all the way through. Other than the fact that I cleaned it off, installed the BNC connectors, and sprayed contact cleaner on all of the contacts for the switches and the uh, two potentiometers. This is exactly as I received it from eBay. The contact cleaner I used, and I don't know if it's truly suitable for potentiometers, but it works, was, uh, who makes this? TA Emerald, and I guess the brand name of Puretronic Contract Cleaner. I have no idea where I purchased it. And it does say applications, potentiometers, tuners, volume controls, I assume switches. Anyway, it's contact cleaner. We'll look at the uh, RF output, obviously. This does output a 600 hertz uh, audio signal. As long as the switch is in the internal modulation position, and the level is set by this uh, combination potentiometer and power switch. See, there's light. And one thing about RCA test equipment, it has these little rubber knobs that fit over the spline shaft. Once they get old and they tend to slide on the shaft. In any event, there's a 600 cycle audio output available here. And, depending on where this is set, there is modulation available, both internal from this oscillator and external. The switch is in the external position by inputting a signal here. We'll look at that. I'm on band A. Uh, I've set it at A, 125 kilohertz. Look at the oscilloscope. It's 125.9 kilohertz on the frequency meter. And I'm, I intend to use the same scale. I'll, I'll change the sweep rate as we change frequency. And it's uh, 1.5 volts peak to peak. I'll go to band B. And the closest on B is 300 kilohertz. That's right there. I'm reading 303 kilohertz and 1.3 volts peak to peak. I'll go to band C. Travel a little off center to or one mega cycle right there. One volt peak to peak and 1.009 megahertz. We'll go to band D. And this is 2.5 megahertz. Which is right there. 2.517 and 
1.16 peak to peak. Band E, and let's see, 7 megahertz. It's pretty close to the center. And the output is dropped to uh, half a volt peak to peak, and it's 7.12 megahertz. To band F, and 20 megahertz. And now I'm going to have to change scales on the scope. So it's 20.2 uh, megahertz, but the output has dropped to 170 millivolts. So except for the fact that the output drops as we increase in frequency, this thing is probably well calibrated and working. I'll change this now and we'll look at the audio output. A nice looking sine wave, six and a half volts peak to peak, and 551, 552 hertz. So that's pretty close to the advertised 600. Now we'll look at a modulated frequency. I'm going to go ahead and turn it to uh, C. I'm going to output a 1 megahertz signal. So the yellow will be the modulated signal. And for ease of uh, synchronizing, I'm going to take a sample of the audio output and I'm going to connect it to the auxiliary input of the oscilloscope. I'll go to uh, sync and I'll sync on the, I choose a source for synchronization. That is external. See, as soon as I chose external, bang, froze it. I can vary the intensity of the audio output, and you see how the modulation envelope is developed. This outline, top and bottom, is the modulation envelope. These pale yellow infills, at the top and bottom. Those are actually a 1 megahertz sine wave bouncing up and down, varied in amplitude by a 600 hertz, 550 hertz audio signal. By varying the percentage of modulation knob, I can make the modulation increase to about 80%. Now I have the RF output going directly to the yellow uh, on my oscilloscope. I've moved the T here. One side of the T is coming from the function generator and going into the uh, signal generator as well as going to the purple channel of my oscilloscope. I'm still set for a uh, 1 megahertz output. I'm on C. And you can see this is a, uh, just happens to be a 1000 hertz sine wave. And here is the modulation envelope when we've got a sine wave displayed. So this is the function generator. This is the AM modulated output signal. To get, let me change the signal generator to a square wave. So 
So we're modulating with this, and it looks like we're getting a sort of distorted sine wave. Her wave produces this envelope and a triangular wave. That's the modulating wave, and this is the envelope. Go back to a sine wave, crank the sine wave up to about 100% modulation. Now that's too much there, but right about there. That's close to 100% modulation. And the RF and the function generator is outputting 12 volts peak to peak. That's with the modulation switch set in external. So you can see it's a fairly nice uh, all solid state 85 to 40 megahertz with an auxiliary audio output and the ability to provide internal or external sourced AM modulation. Now if you want to see something really strange come back for part three. We'll put this in the sweep position and then all kinds of Funny things happen.